So in this video, we're going to be looking at something called the rate determining step and how we can predict a two step mechanism for a reaction taking place with some information like the rate equation itself. Now, when we look at a reaction, let's say in this reaction over here, right, our reactants, their bonds don't magically break and form the products over here. It actually happens in a series of steps, which is known as a mechanism. Now, the rate determining step is going to be the slowest part of that mechanism because the rate of that step in the actual reaction mechanism is going to limit the progress of the reaction. And without that actually happening the rest of them won't happen so we can make the following establishment that the slowest step is going to be known as the rate determining step right now let's say if we're asked to suggest a two-step mechanism for this reaction shown over here we need to be able to make the following assumption the rate equation over here whatever is shown in the rate equation such as over here we've got nitrogen dioxide is going to be the reactants in our first step in our slow step in this case and so you can see over here right i've got two lots of them because the stoichiometry is going to be equal to just in this instance the order itself right remember normally when you deal with rate equations the order has nothing to do with the stoichiometry but when you deal with the rate determining step that's when the order becomes important in terms of stoichiometry now for that normally you get one mark because that's going to be your only reactant that you're dealing with and so these two are going to react together we need to be able to use these two up over here and then we need to be able to form these two products over here so two lots of nitrogen dioxide is going to react together to form one of my products Obviously, it can't be the carbon dioxide product because that contains carbon. In our reactions, we don't have carbon. So we need to think about how we can make NO because that seems pretty suitable and uh, what intermediate product we might actually have that is eventually used up. Well, I could end up with some things left over, right? One nitrogen atom, three oxygen atoms, and so I've got NO3. Now, that NO3 now needs to react to finish the rest of my mechanism and make the rest of my products and use up any remaining reactants itself. And so the only thing that I can actually make right now is going to be carbon dioxide because that's something that I need to be able to make. How to make that? Well, I could react this intermediate with carbon monoxide and so I can form that. What's going to be left over is one nitrogen atom and two oxygen atoms and so that must be NO2 being formed there as well. Now this example is actually pretty hard because we need to be able to think about this in terms of first of all balancing in terms of what's been used up and what's been created and then keeping our nitrogen dioxide right constant in terms of the stoichiometry itself. So yeah how do I actually check if this is right in the exam? Well I would split this down the middle and then I would look at what's on the left with what's on the right and I can cancel it through both equations. Now what if I were to cancel out anything else? Well let's say if I were to look at nitrogen dioxide we're using two lots so I can get rid of this one lot over here because it cancels with this one over here and so overall what I'm left with is one lot of nitrogen dioxide reacting to form nitrogen monoxide and then carbon monoxide is reacting to form carbon dioxide overall. And so our overall equation is going to look like this, where I've got nitrogen dioxide reacting with carbon monoxide to form nitrogen monoxide plus, and then it's going to be carbon dioxide as well. So yeah, you can see and check if a rate determining step question, when you're asked to predict a mechanism, is going to be correct by writing the overall equation as well. Remember, if you're dealing with charges, the charges need to balance in each step as well. Now, moving on, I've got a task for you to do. I want you to try the following. Feel free to pause the video and have a go. So yeah, first question, the rate determining step RDS for a reaction between X and Y is given as 2X going to Z. Predict the rate equation for this reaction. Well, remember what we said, the reactants in the rate determining step, the slowest step of the mechanism, is going to be what we expect to find in the rate equation. So we expect to have rate is equal to K. That's going to be times by the concentration of X in this case. And only in this circumstance, when we deal with the rate determining step only, we can assume that that stoichiometry of 2 is going to be order 2. Right? Now, looking at the next question, predict the rate equation for the following mechanism. Well, if we were to look at the slowest step, which is also known as the rate determining step, we can look at the reactants where we've got over here methanol and we've got here protons and so i know my rate equation is going to look like this where rate is going to be equal to and then it's going to be k and then i'm going to have methanol ch3 or h and then i'm going to have that times in h plus and they're both going to be order one as well the next question determine the overall equation for the reaction so again i need to split this down the middle cancel what's on the left with what's on the right so in this case what i can see is h plus is going to cancel with this h plus over here we've got ch3 or h2 plus over here cancelling with this over here we've also got a ch3 cancelling with this ch3 over here and then we also have 
this CH3CO2 minus cancelling with this CH3CO2 minus over here as well. And so, right, our overall equation is going to leave us with the following, where we take methanol, which is CH3OH, we're going to react that with ethanoic acid. And what we end up forming is this compound here, which is actually an ester from module 6. And then we end up forming water as well, which is shown over here. So there's our overall equation. Yeah, feel free to have a go at the next task. So yeah, bromine can only be formed by the oxidation of HBr with O2. The following mechanism has been suggested for this multi-step reaction. We can see here we've got a bunch of different steps. The rate equation for this reaction is going to be rate is equal to KHBr O2. And everything's going to be order 1 as well. Explain which of the four steps above is the rate determining step. Well, we can see the following over here, this rate equation. And we know that the reactants in our rate determining step must have one lot of HBr and one lot of oxygen. Which one of these equations is going to have that? Well, it's going to be step 1. And so I know step 1 is the slowest step. It's the rate determining step. Determine the overall equation for this reaction. Well, let's see if I were to do that again. Split it down. What have I got on each side? HBrO2 there, HBrO2 there. I've got um, HBrO over here, right? HBrO over here and two lots over there as well. So overall, what I should end up with is the following. Four lots of HBr because that's what I've got over here. One, two, three, four. Reacting with one lot of oxygen. And what that's going to make is two lots of bromine. And then it's going to make two lots of H2O as well. So yeah, feel free to have a go at these. I want you to suggest a two-step mechanism for the following reactions. So yeah, in this case, right, for all of these, we're going to have the slow step, which is going to be the first step. And so that's going to be step one. And that's going to be the rate determining step as well. And then we're also going to have step two in here as well. And so in that case, right, what we would end up with is looking at our rate equation. We've got two lots of NO in there. So we've got two lots of NO in there and they're going to react to form some of our compounds. In this case, I'm going to go with NO2. That's one of our products done over there. And then we're also going to form maybe what's left over, which is going to be NO on its own that could be an intermediate that's possible remember you can get more than one possible answer for these that n is going to react with maybe oxygen and once it reacts with oxygen we end up making no2 does this balance if i cancel this and this out i do end up making my overall equation over here and so i know that's going to be correct in the next one let's say if i were to look at the following rate equation over here where rate is equal to kh2 no2 right i could do the following where i've got again i've got my slow step step one my rate determining step and then i've got my fastest step step two which is not the rate determining step and so if i were to work out the following i know that based on this rate equation over here i'm going to have hydrogen reacting with two lots of nitrogen monoxide and that's going to make an intermediate product uh, one of the products that we could actually probably end up making is a lot of water right we can get rid of one of these oxygens and then we could make maybe n2o right that's what's left over in terms of the atoms i'm just combining them together that could be an intermediate and that n2o could react with another lot of hydrogen because remember we've only used one of these so far and we've used up both of these so in that case that could make right our other lot of water and then nitrogen itself and so i end up with h2o and then i end up with n2 as well yeah so yeah moving on to the next one right we've got over here the rate equation we've got one lot of n2o and we can see that in our actual reaction we've got two lots of n2o reacting to form n2o2 so in that case again i should have the following in my rate determining step i'm going to have n2o reacting to form some uh, products which one of them could be n2 and then we could be left with o as it maybe a radical or something and uh, that o right is not one of our products so it's going to be an intermediate that's going to react with maybe another lot of n2o which is another remaining reactant because remember one of the n2o's is in the rate determining step the other one isn't and so what i could end up forming is nitrogen again I formed my two lots of nitrogen and then I could also form oxygen too and there's my answer done. Moving on, feel free to have a go at these three, a bit more trickier. 
So yeah, the first one, right, we've got over here um, the decomposition of ozone. And so if I were to look at the rate equation, I can see that rate is equal to K. And then we've got chlorine radical and ozone itself. So I know in my rate determining step to begin with, I'm going to have the following. My slowest step is going to have right chlorine radicals reacting with ozone. And that's going to form something, an intermediate. And so we end up forming oxygen. And we need to use up a lot of oxygen as well. So in that case, I'm going to form these chlorate radicals. So these chlorate radicals, that's going to be our intermediate. And these chlorate radicals can go ahead and react with maybe, let's say, oxygen to form two lots of oxygen gas itself. And then we end up with a chlorine radical being regenerated. If it's there at the start, there at the end, it's not used up, but speeds up the rate of the reaction. Normally, you'd expect to find it in the rate determining step. We say it is a catalyst. This is a homogeneous catalyst in this case. It's in the same phase as our reactants. So looking at the next one, right, this one's a bit more easier. So again, I've got ozone going to oxygen and the rate determining step is going to be uh, just ozone on itself so i'm going to have one lot of ozone to begin with that's going to break down into something maybe oxygen because that's one of our products and then maybe an oxygen atom that oxygen atom is going to be an intermediate because it's not in our reacting to products it's going to react with then maybe another lot of ozone and so i've used up all my ozones over here and then that's going to form two lots of oxygen itself i've used my reactants i've used my products and then any intermediates are actually going to cancel which in this case they do as well the next one right the rate equation over here a bit more trickier again because we've got a big molecule if we were to deal with that we know that our rate equation over here is going to show us our actual rate determining step so in that case i've got n2o5 that's going to react and that's going to form one of our products or two of our products in this case but i could end up forming two lots of no2 maybe and then that leaves me with one oxygen atom left over and then that oxygen atom itself may go and react with another lot of n2o5 because we've got two lots over there and so what we could be left with is our product which is going to be another two lots of no2 and then oxygen as well right remember there's more than one possible answer for these